Have you ever scrolled through Instagram or Pinterest or any other social platform only to have your breath taken away by a stunning shot of floating wonder? These incredible levitating shots can instantly grab any viewer's interest and that kind of attention snatching, wow inducing photography is exactly what you need as a small business. Put your wands away and get your camera fired up. We're going to learn how to make objects float. Hey guys, Tani of Replica Surfaces here. I'm here to tell you guys that it is possible to create stunning floating images. And that is exactly what we're doing in today's video with the help of our good friend, Sean Misa over at Misa Hungry, who helped us create this magical tutorial. We're giving you a behind the scenes look at how the stage was set, how to capture the photo, and a step-by-step -step process for creating your own floating photos using the camera you already have, whether it's a DSLR or the phone camera in your pocket, along with some post-processing magic in Lightroom. So let's get to it. With the help of a few photography tools and the tricks you're about to learn from this video, we'll be making a floating s'more scene. It's actually quite easy to do. The main things you'll need are the items you want to float, something to hold up your food for each shot, such as a bamboo skewer or a pair of tweezers, your camera, and a tripod. To set this up, you'll need to visualize your desired final floating scene and decide if you'll want multiple flying layers or not. In this video, we'll go over what you need to capture your floating items, and then we'll take it into Lightroom to remove the bamboo skewer with Lightroom Mobile. For the first step, we placed all the stationary props where we wanted them to be in the final photo. Next, we need to use something to hold the marshmallow in midair. We used a bamboo skewer and manually held it above the plate. When you're ready to start taking photos, be sure to snap a few to ensure the camera focuses on the marshmallow. You can also use tweezers to hold more solid pieces that cannot be pierced with a skewer, like we did with the cookie in the chocolate bar for the final photo. Set a timer on your camera for 10 seconds to give yourself enough time to get into position or use a remote shutter release to set off your camera. These remote shutter releases can be directly plugged into your camera to trigger your camera shutter without you having to touch the camera body at all. Some are even Bluetooth capable and can connect to your camera without any cables. You can also look into your camera functions to see if your camera offers Bluetooth connectivity, has a dedicated app for remote shooting, or if you can connect your camera to your laptop or tablet with a tethering cable. Since we're going to crop the image down a little bit anyway, it's totally okay that the hand is partially in the photo. If you took your photo with the exact crop ratio that you want, then you'll want to make sure that your hand isn't in the photo so that it's easier to remove the skewer in Lightroom. You could also use a clamp with an adjustable arm to position your skewer or place your skewer in a piece of styrofoam to hold it in place. Once you have your marshmallow in position, grab a few photos of it in midair so you have a few options to work with. Alternatively, you can stack your food in an asymmetric fashion with the help of some bamboo skewers or some toothpicks like we did here with these donuts. A few well-placed skewers or toothpicks can actually elevate your goodies and photos to new heights. But let's get back to our magical marshmallow scene. Now that we have our levitating marshmallow photo, we'll need to open this photo up in Adobe Lightroom Mobile. After you're finished loading the photo, you'll want to press the healing icon on the bottom corner of your menu. Once you click that, select the healing brush icon from the top of the screen. There are two different tools located under healing, the healing brush and the clone stamp. The healing brush will copy a section you choose and blend it with the surrounding area. On the other hand, the clone stamp will copy your selection exactly. Since there are some textures in the background, we'll use the healing brush rather than the clone stamp since we want to blend the copied section in with the background. After selecting the healing brush, you can choose the size of your brush, the hardness of the edges, and the opacity of the brush in the three circles below the tools. To blend the disappearance of the skewer with the background, we went with a slightly softer edge set to about 60, and we set the brush size to be just a little bit thicker than the skewer itself, and then we set the opacity at 100 to be sure the skewer is completely removed. Next, paint over the bamboo skewer to paint the area you want to hide. Since we want the area around the marshmallow to be crisp, we'll remove the skewer up to a small area of the skewer that is actually inserted into the marshmallow. The area can be highlighted and viewed as a mask when you paint over the skewers, so you can see exactly what you'll be removing. Once you finish selecting the area you want to be removed, another shape will pop up next to it. The secondary selected area is what will be copied over your painted area. Lightroom usually does a pretty good job of automatically selecting the area to best copy it from. If it doesn't, feel free to move it to a better spot to copy from. 
You'll see the hand is still showing slightly now that we've removed part of it that was holding the skewer. Magic can be weird sometimes, especially if you don't get the spell just right, but that's okay, we'll be cropping it anyways. From here, you can make all the stylistic edits within the editing panels in Lightroom Mobile. If you want to learn more about Lightroom, you're gonna wanna check out our Lightroom tutorial. Don't worry, I'll be sure to link it below. Before we start cropping, we'll wanna make sure the small skewer bit by the marshmallow disappears. To do that, we'll now use the clone stamp tool. That's the icon that looks like a little stamp below the band-aid. For the best results, zoom into the photo so you can see exactly what you want to remove. Now, we'll go ahead and do the same thing we did before with the healing brush by painting over the area we want removed with the clone stamp. Again, Lightroom did a pretty good job of selecting the best area to copy, but if it doesn't in your case, feel free to pick a better area by dragging it to another section of the image. Voila, you now have a floating marshmallow with an alien hand wanting to grab it. Not that I have anything against aliens, but for this photo, we do want to clean it up. So we'll just give it a little bit of a crop and bam, no more aliens trying to steal the floating marshmallow. If you only want one element of your image floating, then you're done. Congratulations, you have now passed the first level of photo wizardry school. We would like to issue a huge thank you to Sean Misa for helping us out with this floating food how-to. If you want to see multiple floating layers in action, be sure to check out Sean's page over at Misa Hungry because his whole feed is full of incredible photography with tons of examples of floating food and products. I'll link his profile in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this magical demonstration. Let us know if you give this a try by tagging at Replica Surfaces or hashtag Replica Surfaces on Instagram. We'll see you here next week.